All right, I think that we can start. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining for today's our Flex Fridays with our sister corners from Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Tajikistan. My name is Firuz Yogbekov, and I will be the moderator for today's session. We are having a lot of particip uh, participants joining us from the whole Central Asian countries. And we are very excited to present our speakers and our coordinators from each of our spaces. This is why before we will do this, I would like to notify all of you, first of all, you will receive the poll, which will be, uh, which will appear soon on your screen. And this poll will, will have three questions. Please, in order we could identify our audience, where are you from? What age you are? And of course, uh, how did you find out about the event? Will give us a more understanding about our the picture of our audience. You will receive this poll soon. And uh, before we will continue, I would kindly ask all our participants in Zoom to mute themselves while the speaker is giving the speech. Otherwise, we will have a lot of noise and a lot of disturbance. And another thing, if you will have any questions, please type them in a the chat box. Write down your name, your country, and the question. And we will further this question to our speakers. And of course, if you will have any reactions, any excitements, use the reactions in the reactions buttons so we could see if you are happy, sad, or excited for today. And without further ado, I, as I already uh, introduced myself, my name is Firuz Yogbekov, and I am one of the coordinators of, of American space Dushanbe, uh, which is located in Tajikistan. And now I would like to give uh, the floor to our next coordinator from American Corner Oral, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Central Asian Collaborative event. My name is Dina, and I'm coordinator of American Corner Oral Kazakhstan, and I hope you enjoy our event today. Altnay, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the session. And um, my name is Altnay. I'm Talaz American Corner. Talaz is situated, uh, located in Kyrgyzstan, as you know. So thank you very much for joining. Dita. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, welcome to our uh, Central Asian project. My name is Rita, and uh, I'm activity coordinator in Dashro Goose, uh, which is located in Turkmenistan. Uh, today, we'll be uh, speaking about Flex. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please free, uh, feel free to, um, like uh, Firuz mentioned, to put them in the chat box. Thank you so much. I hope you will enjoy this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, colleagues, for joining us for today. And now I would uh, like to give the floor to the first speaker. Please, uh, Dina, introduce your speaker. OK, let me introduce the speakers from Kazakhstan. They are Arstan and Yernar, Flex 2020 alumni. Uh, Arstan Ernar will talk about FLEX, what is FLEX and its history. Mm -hmm. Arstan Ernar, please. So, shall we begin? I'll start sharing my screen with you guys just to start mm -hmm. our presentations. So, here we go. Starting with this and present. So, to begin with, my name is Arstan, or you can call me Leo, if it's more convenient for you. I am an alumni of 2020, so almost the last alumni of FLEX, and also a city representative from Kurganda. Now, Yernar. Evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Yernar. Uh, I am also a last alumni uh, 1920. 
And also, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. So we're going to talk about what Flex is and what is the story of Flex, because you should know it actually is really long because it's been founded in 1993. So it's almost 28 years old. Um, so to begin with, uh, I shall show you what it, Flex is briefly about. Your now will talk about it. So basically Flex is uh, is all about uh, 29,000 Flex alumni worldwide. It, as uh, Aristan mentioned, it exists since 1993 and over 20,000 US host families are um, in partnership with Flex. So, and also, as you know, um, Flex is uh, 28 years old. And um, since 1993, we've been, uh, the US families, the, the US host families have been hosting uh, students from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and many other uh, 20, 20 countries. And also, uh, I would like to mention that uh, Flex is also about Flex community and Flex family that you will get uh, through along the way of applying for Flex. So it's kind of a uh, Flex family and the uh, US host family are two families that you will get uh, while uh, being a Flex student. So next thing I would like to talk about is Flex history. What is Flex in general? So as you can see, Flex is a highly competitive scholarship based foreign exchange uh, program funded by US Department of State. It was established in 1993 by US Senator Bill Bradley. Uh, so Bill Bradley thought that um, worldwide exchange is a something that will uh, make our world, world better in the future. So he developed this program back in 1993, back in 1992 actually. And in 1993, it was approved by US Department of State. So it operates in more than 20 countries. And I, as I mentioned before, uh, over 35,000 students every year apply for FLEX uh, to get fully funded one year scholarship and opportunity to live in American uh, host family and to attend American high school. So it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a um, dream of everyone who applies for FLEX and who goes through three tours, which we will uh, talk about later. So um, next. So as you know, mentioned, there are over 22 countries that are the part of Flex partnership. And you can see that there are actually exactly 22 countries that are able to participate in Flex program, which is Future Leaders Exchange Program. So here are the eight programs, the eight countries that are located in Asia. And these eight countries are the partners with Flex. It means that kids from these countries are able to go with help of Flex program. These are 14 European participating countries. And just so you know that Flex is not only about being in the US, it's also about making friends along the way. And you are going to be able to make friends not only in the USA, but also in so many different countries. So you have 22 countries to choose from, and you will have a lot of new cultures to meet and to acknowledge. Yep, exactly. So, and all of those 22 countries, oh yeah, exactly 22 countries, they will all go to these 50 states in the US. So one of these states might even become your home in future. You will have a hot US host family, you will attend high school, and you will lifelong, you will make lifelong friends. So now about the requirements. So okay, I would like to talk about requirements. So actually, Flex, as as I mentioned before, uh, Flex is a highly competitive uh, program. And uh, obviously it has um, many requirements. So first of all, it's date of birth. Uh, it was uh, date of birth is being changed every year. So for this year, it's from it's varies from 2004 to 2006. So um, and also being enrolled in um, attending a secondary school in the country uh, in the country from 22 countries participants is a uh, one of the major requirements. No basic English. 
So this requirement is actually is not, it's more of a minor requirement because uh, knowing basic English will get you through three tours. You don't have to be uh, advanced English. You don't have to have B2 English. You, you don't have to have a, a B2 English, B2 level of English in order to participate in Flex. You just have to know basic English, like basic things. And also being a citizen or a participant of 20, of one of the 22 countries participants is a uh, also required. Meet the G1 of visa requirements and uh, not staying in the US uh, for three months or more than uh, or more during the, the past five years. So these are these uh, last requirements are the requirements for the visa, especially after um, uh, being after becoming a finalist, you will have to fill out some many, many documents for the visa. And yeah, th these are the main two requirements for that. Okay, next. And also uh, the main requirements of FLAX is being a high schooler. So it means that uh, in some countries, there are uh, actually requirements that vary a little bit from country to country. For example, in Kazakhstan, in order to be able to participate in FLAX program, you have to attend eighth grade or ninth grade or 10th grade, which means that 11th graders aren't allowed and seventh graders are not allowed. Um, uh, they vary from country to country. So as an example, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, eighth graders cannot apply, but ninth graders and 10th graders can apply. And also first years of college. Uh, I will show you the brochure. So just you would know exactly where to contact and who to talk to if you need to know. So these are, uh, for example, we're talking right now about Kazakhstan and you have to be in eighth, ninth, tenth, or uh, first year of college. In Kyrgyzstan, ninth, ten, or first year of lyceum or college. Um, as of Turkmenistan, you will have to contact uh, contact contact your U.S. Um, U.S. government embassy, and they will tell you a little bit more about them. In Uzbekistan, it's ninth, tenth, and eleventh. So uh, now about what you're not supposed to have in order succeed. Um, so students may not participate if he or she does not meet the above criteria that we mentioned before, uh, or if he or she stayed in the USA for three or more months during the five year period. So in the last five years, you're not supposed to be in the US for three or, one, or more months. So the next requirement is his or her family or any member of the family should not have applied uh, to emigrate to the USA, which means it's a green card or work permission. So if you don't have any relatives that apply for such things, you are more than welcome to apply for FLEX program. Now, me and Dunar will talk about a little bit more about scholarship and basically what it covers. So I'll begin and Dunar will add up. Um, so the Flex Scholarship, uh, it provides you with a round trip, which means that you will have paid your tickets to the U.S. and from the U.S. and also from your home, from your home city to the city where the airport is. The next one is monthly allowance to help students participate in social activities and buy necessary personal supplies, uh, which means that you will have enough money to. Uh, buy your own personal stuff, but you will not have extra money to go on road trips or buy something expensive, which means that it's just for you to participate in social life at school. And Thank you, Arstan. Uh, placement with selected and screened the U.S. host family for one year. As I, uh, as I mentioned before, you are being chosen by host family after you become a finalist. And... Uh, uh, after the scholarship covers the full uh, the host family and everything that is related to it, the enrollment in a U.S. secondary school that is also a an option of scholarship uh, program orientation activities, including pre-program preparation and re-entry preparation. So these two are actually a the first one would be pre-program preparation is a PDO. It's where you are being uh, trained, where you are being prepared for the U.S where you, uh, where the other alumni will tell you everything about uh, that you will have to face everything about school, school host family and everything um, 
and the re-entry preparation is more about documentation and uh, and the dates of the PDO. So PDO is actually a pretty fun thing. We will talk about it. Um, we'll talk about it more later. Uh, program activities arranged in local U.S. communities. So um, activities, uh, talking about activities, it's more of a sport activities like um, American football, baseball, tennis. All of them are covered by the scholarship and by the high school you will attend to. And the last but not least is medical insurance, excluding uh, pre-existing conditions and dental care. So medical insurance is, as you probably know, um, medical insurance in the US is pretty expensive, but uh, Flex also covers that. Flex covers uh, many, many things, many injuries that you will probably have or or even the dental care, the dental, the dentist, the dentist appointment, everything is covered by Flex. Thank you. Um, but as you know already mentioned, pre-existing conditions are not covered. So it means that before you go to the US, you will be uh, examinated, which means that you will pass your health exams and stuff. So if you are healthy and you have nothing to fear about, then everything else will be covered except dental care. Because uh, you, so uh, if you're going to apply for flex, uh, my advice for you will be to check all your teeth because dental care in the US is extremely expensive. There is why you should do all your uh, teeth preparations in advance. And also, um, so this was about the scholarship. Now we shall talk about what flex is. But before, I think me and Yunar, we should talk a little bit more about the tours that uh, lead to FLEX, which means that there are three tours, which include essays, interviews, tests, and I think we should elaborate a little bit about that. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Arstan. I will start. So first tour is a 15-minute test. Uh, it's where you will need your English, where you will need your English level, English skills. Uh, second tour would be an essay uh, that you'll have to write for 30 minutes. There's, there's going to be three topics for that. Uh, and they, they mainly are all about leadership and uh, how would you handle yourself in critical situations. And the last tour is an interview and also a um, test that you will uh, have to take in order to be a flex finalist, flex participant. Because uh, taking, by taking this test, you will be uh, assigned to high school. Yeah. Right. So um, these tests are nothing to fear about because if you know English pretty well, I mean, at least basics, you will be able to write logically correct and uh, just brilliant essays. So those essays are nothing to be feared as well because they are just about simple life situations as, example, as an example of what would you do if anything went wrong or something like that? So it's just um, with the help of this estate, you will show con uh, admissions committee that you are able to handle certain situations and you, you will show them that you know basic English as well. Also, I would like to add that at in third tour, you will be given a, a big pile of documents which you have to fill it's th these documents are very vital because uh, they will contain your personal information, your medical information, uh, all of your uh, all of that that you will have to do. And uh, yeah, these documents will be uh, with you until you will get to the US. So right, uh, as you mentioned, those documents are very vital and they're important. So therefore, um, when you get to the third tour, you should really, uh, if you don't know how to fill certain documents, don't worry about that because uh, in the orientation, they will tell you almost everything you need to know. And those documents are really, aren't really something that hard of a thing. So just relax and do your best. So now we should talk about what FLEX is for us, just in a personal way. So yeah, the first part was more of a, like requirements and the rules. Second part will be our experience. So as you can see, there's a picture from the airport with me, uh, Arstan and other Flex alumni. Uh, it's when we first get, got to the US, it's the Detroit airport, Detroit National Airport. 
uh, so basically it's when you are split up and you fly to your states, you fly to your uh, cities. And, so and also there, there is a picture of me standing around uh, my flex community in my city. So uh, also I would like to add that in the city you will stay in, there's gonna be other students from other countries. Uh, so it's uh, more of a uh, worldwide uh, flex exchange that you will live with. And the bottom picture is a picture of my host family and my brother from, and my double placement from Romania. So as you can see, there's a dog and there's two dogs in the picture. So here's fun fact about American host families. They all, pretty much all of them, they like uh, keeping dogs. They like dogs, they like animals. So uh, you probably will have uh, two to three dogs in your house they're yeah i've they're, had three and they all were really adorable I, I had four i mean i had four so <laughs> i loved all of them yeah i i mean when you come back you will really miss those dogs because you know waking up when you have someone to cuddle with it's a really nice thing yeah. so now to the next slide uh now it's about my personal story uh as you know i said before you will have your own city you will you will have your own host parents and this is how it's going to look like you will celebrate some uh you will celebrate some dates with each other and you will have a really good experience because uh they really appreciate um holidays as an example here we have easter and for every holiday that we had we all gathered together and we shared a meal we played games and you just sort of bond with your family and it's actually almost as if you have a second family. It's gonna become something like that. And you will just um, enjoy their company because you will have your own little brother or little sister. You will have dogs, you will have new grandparents, you will have new parents as a matter of fact. And it's going to change you. I mean, because you will try to be the best you can and they will try to be the best they can so that both of you will, uh, we will experience them the best out of you out of it and to the right there is a picture uh, of the christmas we had and as you can see we shared uh, like the same amazies and it was actually amazing because uh, it also part of bonding and i will show you the next slide it will show you something about the uh, what flex is. So flex is not only about having a great time in the US, it's also a huge responsibility because you are not only being a student, you're also being an ambassador. As you can see here, here with me and uh, two other students, Ivan from Spain, uh, Ivan from Bulgaria and Giuseppe from Spain, we, conduct, we made a project with uh, Girl Scouts. We made an international day of some sort and we showcased a lot of countries and uh, made interesting facts about them and stuff. So it went really well and you just present your country, you show how good of a country it is, you, you just explain uh, something new to those kids so that when they grow up, they will have a global perspective. And believe me, you will have even more global perspective than them because you will see so many new cultures and you will live with them. So you will be as flexible as possible. Oh, now me and I would like to talk about what flags gave us. And this is... This is our PDO. So to the right, you can see the PDO one and to the left, it's the PDO two, I remember, or three. It's, yes. yeah, PDO one is uh, a my PDO, which is, which uh, took place in uh, Astana. So basically it's, uh, we're gonna talk about more of a flex friends that we gained through, uh, through the way of uh, applying for flex. So there's gonna be around, uh, I don't know, like, whole bunch of people who also applied for flex and they they will become these strangers will become your friends your flex buddies which you will which you will talk to even after the flex uh, so here you can see that uh we there's a there there was actually a birthday uh present for this girl in the middle uh on the picture to the right this girl in the middle in the red uh, dress had a birthday and we we all came to um say uh, happy birthday 
but it's not all of us. There's just, uh, I don't know, like just a half of the people who was there. So I would like to say that uh, PDO was a such thing that uh, uh, that inspired me, that it was um, very heartwarming to meet all those people who also went through all the stages you did and who also uh, did their best, who also were hardworking to, and who also had a dream of going to the US. And uh, these are like, uh, they are like-minded people. They're people like you. They're just students who are applying for Flex and it's amazing. It's, it's just wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so uh, this is all about the Flex. And before we will head up, uh, we would like you to, well, uh, you have to remember all the information because uh, you will get the kind of a victor, uh, kind of a poll at the end that will give you the opportunity to win. And also there is the poll that uh, is launched. It has uh, one minute. Please fill this poll out so it could give us a better sense of uh, our audience. Who should we focus on more? And then we will give the floor to Altenai and she will introduce her speaker. Thank you very much, Firuz, Leo, Yernard. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, now, today our guest speaker from Kyrgyzstan is Hilola Yakubshanova. She is Flex alumna 2017. Hilola. Hello, guys. My name is Hilola and I'm Flex alumna from Kyrgyzstan 2017. I'm really glad to be here. Right now, I will make a presentation about uh, exactly how to pass each round and how to be prepared for the examination. My presentation will be short because I don't want to take a lot of time, give you specific things. And can you do the house co host of me? Okay. Um, I hope you can see them, my presentation. Yes. Uh, as before, guys said, the future leaders exchange, they explain you what it is, what is it, an application process. Uh, the application process first is a start from the criteria. Students must be all of following years in order to be eligible for this program of fall 2021. Be citizen of flex following countries. As I said, there is a flex countries where you can participate studying from the 9th, 10th, 11th grade. And also they explain that there is a possibility that you can, grades will be changed depends on the country. Have a good grade or better, of course, when you have a good academic grade, it gives you big plus that you are active and you are able to study in US. Be able to speak English well, meet J1 visa requirement. They already explained you which visa requirements you need. Not have lived in US for three uh, months or more or five years. This is for the visa criteria. Next, uh, how to apply. Uh, right now, in my, in my presentation, I put the examination process before COVID and after COVID, first the competition consists of three rounds. Uh, when you are applying to the FLEX program, you have three rounds. Uh, first round is a short English language test. Uh, second round is essays in English. Uh, round three is standardized test of English and essays, application and interview. Let's start from the first round. Before COVID, I've been attending for the first round in 2015. Mostly first round start on September, October, September, but in most of the countries in the fall. Uh, short English language test consists only 15 minutes and it's multiple choice test. Uh, here I will give you one uh, life hack probably because when you were applying for this short uh, English language test, always think about, not about the timing, you need to think about how to uh, apply like uh, around the multiple choice, because if you will left empty, there is a big possibility that you will not gonna get into the second round. Just if you don't know, even just apply, okay? Uh, and it gives only 15 minutes to get all questions applied. Uh, in the COVID time, now it changes. COVID time open to eligible applicants from September to October. These rounds include a preliminary online application and three essays questions that, that must be submitted within 10 days starting the application. 
probably this year we will also going to have only the online application process because we're still having the virus time and the COVID time. Uh, that's why probably you will have the online application where you have to write the three essays and you will have access to your account during the 10 days. But when I applied, it was like before COVID, um, oh, we had huge and big competition. I don't know, I was so stressed. It was my first time that I'm attending such kind of exam. Uh, but be sure, like be, uh, how I would say, be strong, try to get it, you know? Second round is the two essays in English language. Times, it only gives you 45 minutes. Essay questions mostly in mostly based in life-based questions, for example, the psychological, what questions I had, like what you will do if you will go to US, for example, how can you show up your leadership skills or um, or other things? Uh, and also I had like, uh, what did you, the big achievement that you had uh, during last three years? And you have to describe like, there is no matter that if you don't know, there is a possibility that if even you can just like make a little description in Russian language or make a description or draw it. There is like gives you a lot of chances. Important is like just do it, you know, just don't let as empty and you have 45 minutes only. Uh, that time when I applied in the second round, for me, it was a bit hard uh, because uh, I didn't have that bad, like that good English that could help me to write uh, such kind of big essays in my life. But I would say uh, I just wrote what I knew and all the achievements I had and the psychological questions that I answered, which let me help me to pass into third round. Uh, in the COVID time that changes, uh, students will be invited to take part of an English online test, which means in the second round, you will have totally different uh, structures, which uh, means you will have only the English language test. In the third round, it's a standardized English test, essays, application, and interview. The third round was so surprising for me because, um, I'm sorry, okay. In the third round, it was so surprising for me because when I had um, this as application process, I would never expect that I would get into third round as well, but I was kind of sure about myself that I did and applied. But in the third round, first we had English language test. Uh, probably it was 45 minutes and it was multiple choice test about like listening skills, your uh, reading skills, which helps you to get admitted into American school. And there you can be like, there is the possibility that you are eligible to uh, understand all the lectures and etc. etc. Essays, most of the essays are in the second and third round are based like why you want to apply to the, why you want to study in the United States, why you want to be part of the FLEX program. It's mostly based questions why. Uh, here is a life hack that I can give you. It's mostly when you are writing this essay, uh, focus on the culture because this program is helps you to learn another culture. There I wrote like, I would like to learn American culture because I never been abroad and I never thought like uh, about even I had, I will have such kind of opportunity. Then brought about the culture. Why you want to learn about culture? You want to learn language and you can give examples from the American movies that you watch and you want to break the stereotypes and, and, and other things. And also in the third round, they will give you application. They're like full of documentation process there you, that you have to apply like uh, letters for your house family, uh, exams and for the medical testings. Uh, and third, it's an interview. I, I remember like uh, in the interview, they will give you one word that you have to play the play with this word. For example, I had Kansinsanko. I didn't know what is this, but we played like, uh, we thought it's like Native American, uh, Native American word, like America related to Native Americans, but uh, we played like it's a Native American coming and in the Kansinsanko word. And then they're explaining uh, Kansinsanko is the second step of the Himalayan mountain. It was surprising for me because some of the words you will never even hear in your life. But important is you don't have to stop and you have to continue like show up that you are leader in this group. You don't have to show that you are boss uh, when you are playing in this group. You have to show that you are able to like uh, how I can say able to sh uh, play be, be flexible in every situation. And after I had interview, interview questions are 
uh, interview questions are mostly based on uh, what you will do in the United States. I had question like, where do you want to study? What's your future goal? And I said, like, I would like to study in Harvard or the Oxford universities. They were like, wow. Uh, and also they said, uh, what you, if you will have the dog in your family because you have a phobia? And I didn't know what to reply. There is some lots of questions that make you confused. But the important is like, be honest, answer. And also I had question, what if your, uh, your classmates will say that you are from another country and they will discriminate you? And I say to them that there is a every time when you are entering new culture, there is a good people and bad people. They have to mostly pay attention into the good people, not the bad people. And next is that uh, now in the COVID time, it's different. The semi-finalist uh, round will be begin in November and include an interview, as I told you. Uh, three more, three more essay questions, the full application and the comprehensive English test. I think in the COVID time, even there is no difference, only the play, except play, but uh, you can get it like the same test and most of the time just try to look at the questions that they can ask you. Uh, students who pass this stage will be invited to participate by the American Council in their countries. Uh, surprising thing, like when I get in the third round, uh, I didn't knew that I was in the ninth grade and I didn't even expect that from the first time I will hit this and I will get my uh, flex scholarship program. Uh, I was surprised when they invited me for the third round even, but after in March, uh, I remember I got my acceptance, but first they told to my mom, they were like, hey, your daughter is got in, uh, admitted to the scholarship program. Of course, my mom and everyone was surprised. Even my mom was like thinking, how do I will send her into the United States? They try to hide from me. But of course, the luckily American Council called me as well. And I was glad that I passed this program, which is changed fully and totally my life. And guys, when you are applying, just be sure you prepare as well. Be sure that even for the interviews, go in front of the mirror, practice that what I did. And like, be confident. Important is your confidence. Like, if you are not confident and you are not replying the well questions and you are afraid something, it will not gonna help you to pass because they need the strong people. They need the flexible people who can uh, live without parents one year, who can be flexible in the, another culture. And the next is like the results uh, of the competition are expected on May, April, May. Mostly in the April, May, you will receive the results. And uh, lastly, thank you and good luck that I put all the programs. And if you have questions, probably you can write me uh, a direct message. Thank you so much Lola, for this information. This was a really great presentation. And now I would like to give the floor to uh, Rita, our next speaker. She will introduce our next speaker. Please, Rita. Oh, thank you. Uh, so uh, speaker from Turkmenistan is Nazli Khangildeva. She's Flex Alumna 20. Um, um, yeah, uh, Nazli, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for your amazing and informative presentations. They just took me back to my exchange year. They were really awesome. And I hope you can hear me well. Uh, my name is Nazli and I'm from Turkmenistan and I'm Flex alumna of 2020. And today I'm gonna to be basically sharing about my experience, my Flex experience, how I um, spent my year in the United States and all those things. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be really happy to answer them all. Okay, to start with, yeah, I already introduced myself. My name is Nazli and I'm 19 years old. And um, currently I am at home because of the current situations and I am studying a program online, college preparation program, and I'm planning my bachelor's degree basically. basically. Next, please. And thank you, Rita, for helping me with the presentation. Okay, and to talk about how I spent my day in US as an exchange student. Um, well, I was posted in Ohio, state of Ohio. I don't know if you guys know it, but I didn't know it before my exchange student, before my exchange year. 
Um, it's a state uh, where cornfields, most of the cornfields are. So is basically Ohio is known for cornfields and a lot of astronauts that it had and a lot of presidents. If I'm not mistaken, Ohio had like eight presidents like in history. And um, I'm gonna be talking about how do Americans spend their days productively, which really amazed me because I will, like I live in a community where people don't like spend their days like that. So it was a pretty kind of a little bit of culture shock, I would say. Tips we can use and apply to our daily routine um, like that we can um, see from, you know, from people, from American people, and we can like add it to our routine. So, so we can also like spend our days productively. And I'm also going to talk about school, work, sports, friends, family, and other responsibilities. Because as an exchange student, you have a lot of responsibilities to do. And at the end, I was always exhausted, like, because I really wanted to spend my day, um, like, very productively. I always wanted to do something that I haven't tried before. Um, so, yeah, you have to be selfish with your time when you are, you know, when you are an exchange student, and especially when you are in America. Next, please. Okay, summary of my day in U.S. So if I need to add a lot of things, I probably, we did, don't, we wouldn't have enough time. So I'm just gonna make a summary. School from 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Yes, 6 a.m., that's crazy, I know. And in Ohio, Ohio is a state where sun rises like pretty late. It rises at like 7.15ish. And um, my bus used to come at 6 a.m. <laughs> which was crazy and I had to wake up at 5 a.m. And uh, as a lazy person, I was really struggling with that. And I skipped the bus on my uh, like three days at the beginning of my exchange year uh, because my school started right after I went to U.S. So it was pretty crazy. And my host mom was a little bit mad and she told me that I needed to wake up and set an alarm. So I downloaded a new kind of alarm to wake up it was pretty kind of crazy experience for me. And I had my breakfast and lunch at school because as you can guess, I don't really have time and I don't really have an appetite at 6 a.m. in the morning to have breakfast. So I usually ate something at my school. And breakfast was usually, not usually, it was always free at my high school. And I had to pay for my lunch uh, if I needed to buy. So yeah. And after school clubs, I always like uh, was part of school clubs because as a 18 years old exchange student, I couldn't uh, have an opportunity to choose and to be a part of sports. So um, yeah, so like my, as a second, as a backup plan, I had clubs, which I was really grateful for. And just for checking in, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, yes. perfect. <laughs> yes, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, and coming to the volunteering, I'm, I was and I am a person who really loves to help people and to volunteer. And even right now, I'm volunteering online um, in United Nations. Um, I'm trying to teach kids from India or, you know, help with translating stuff. Basically, yeah, it depends on uh, tasks. And um, during my exchange year, I did 200 plus um, volunteering hours. And uh, because like our Turkmen students had a lot of time after COVID because we were the last country who uh, had a chance to come back. So I had a lot of time during, uh, you know, pandemic and uh, I volunteered in a lot of places. Uh, but the majority was um, like library and church. I volunteered at library on Monday and Tuesday. So after schools, like at 3 p.m., my host mom would take me there or my friends would give me a ride. And I hang out with my friends after library. But personally, like to be honest, after volunteering at library for three, two hours, I was really exhausted because I had to um, like organize the books like by uh, like system. So it was really kind of hurting my eyes and I would be really exhausted.
but hanging out with my friends was the best part of the day. We would go to different restaurants and cafes in my city. My city was very small and we didn't really have a lot of things to do, but still like you have to appreciate what you have, you know, like and sunsets in Ohio are the prettiest, I would say. Anyway, I wouldn't say prettiest, but like <laughs> sunsets in America, I would say like they're really, really beautiful. Oh, they're pink and different, different colors. And yeah. And I always had dinner with my family because it was kind of their family um, tradition or rule, I would say, um, that they need to gather in a dinner table with everyone. And a movie or a game night, my host family always like played something or just watched a movie or did something at nighttime, like before the bedtime. So yeah, next please. That was my pretty much my general schedule, I would say, um, during the school days. And as you know, I don't know how it's in other countries, but in our country, we all also have school on Saturday. But in America, on um, like weekends, we were free. That was a really great. <laughs> and these are some pictures from my classes. Um, I took you. I took like seven classes, and one of them was uh, American government, American history, and um, medical terminology, Spanish class. And usually your high school has um, a foreign language that you can take or you need to take sometimes. And I really love that, you know, like we had Spanish and Chinese and I prefer to Spanish. So I had Spanish classes and which was a really, really nice experience. And yeah, I had creative writing class and English class, English and um, government, either government or U US history. And English class, you have to, you must choose them. In other classes, you can choose yourself. Like I have, for example, music theater class, all those fun classes. So yeah. And my lunchtime. Lunch, lunch was my favorite part of the day, I guess. They were really delicious. <laughs> Next, please. Okay, so during the lunchtime, uh, <laughs> Can you guys see my screen? Yes. The next one is that. Yeah. Next please. I couldn't hear that, but yeah. Next please. Uh, just a sec. I think I'm experiencing a connection problem again. Nazli, please go ahead, continue your presentation. Yeah, Sorry, I'm just I waiting for Vita to. Yes, sorry. That's our great uh, connection. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Not yet. No. Oh, we have okay. to wait, I guess. Sorry, guys. Okay, yes, here we, we go. All right. Can you um, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I tried to be I tried to be active um, as as much as active as possible during my uh, school during my high school time, which I don't really regret, um, even though I was exhausted at the end of the day. And on the first picture, as you can see, um, I well, I did two things on that day on a big stage. I would say out of our high schools. I sang a song and signed it at the same time. And then the second thing I did uh, was I gave a motivational speech as an, a young international student. So yeah, th that was the picture of that day. And the second picture, I gave presentations. And after that, we had a field trip to, uh, yeah, to one of the other schools. And on the third picture, it was from my art club, um, art club 
which we were doing really different stuff. And on that week, we painted um, walls in our uh, high school. Yeah. And on the last picture, I, again, like gave a presentation was my Turkmen traditional dress, which was really interesting to American kids to see me like that, uh, but they loved it. Next. Okay, can you guys see the screen? Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, volunteering at the Pataskala li Public Library. As I said, most of my days I was spending in Patas li library, either library or church, because I don't know, they were closest um, to my house and I really enjoyed doing that. So you can see I'm just, um, you know, putting the books back or taking the books. And um, I always like forgot to take pictures. So, um, I just like put my phone on there to the timer and took some pictures um, at the end of my exchange year because sometimes I forgot because I was really busy with books. <laughs> Next, please. But it was one of the best experience. Like I learned a lot of books uh, by volunteering and yeah, the organizing the organizing um, types. Here's another volunteering experience with my Polish friend. She was also a flex student and we volunteered in a city, Columbus city um, in a marathon. That was a big marathon and we were doing, we volunteered for like uh, 10 hours. Yeah, it was exhausting, but it was really, really fun. Next, please. So when you're an exchange student, you have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of things actually. America is a country of possibilities. So I would really suggest you um, to use your chance, like, you know, say yes to everything, you know? Like when people are offering you stuff, like, hey, do you wanna volunteer here? Or do you wanna, you know, come to this like field trip with us at school? Just say yes, even though you are tired because I promise you it's gonna be the best experience of your life. Next, please. Okay. Okay. I was wondering if the internet connection was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Let me do this again. All right, ladies, we are yeah. minutes left uh, in order to conclude the presentation and get back to our poll. Please consider the timing. Uh, you have uh, already, the time is up. Uh, Nazri, if you have anything to uh, add for a conclusion, please. Uh... Uh, sure. Um, as an exchange, as an like flex alumna, I would suggest for future flexors to not afraid from anything and be brave and say yes to new opportunities, make friends and take the first initiative and go for it. You know, enjoy your exchange year. I hope this was helpful and sorry for the bad internet connection i hope you learned something new and thank you for attending thank you so much nasli this is a very informative presentation and uh, indeed volunteering is very important during the flex so telling it from my own experience as well so please consider be volunteer as you will get passed through the uh, all the requirements and all the tours of the FLEX assignments. And for the end of today's presentation, as I promised you, you need to remember all the presentations that our speakers have conducted during today's session. Now we will have this small Kahoot game, which will give you the small questionaries that you need to answer. So this is a game where you need to answer based on the information that you have received today. All these questions were developed on the basis of the presentations that the speakers have conducted. But this will do the FLEX alumni from Tajikistan. Marhabo Zokova is the FLEX alumni 2018. She's uh, an amazing person and uh, she will give more detailed information 
based on her flex experience at the end, uh, probably in the middle of May in our next session. But today she will conduct the Kahoot game. Marhabo, are you with us? Yes, I am here, Firuz. Thank you so much for introducing and inviting me to the session. Uh, accept my greetings all. My name is Marhabo Zakava. And from uh, 2018, right now we will be uh, now we will be playing Kahoot game, which was developed by the given presentation, and I hope that you can hear me well. So for this, please all go to kahoot.it here uh, using the chat. Uh, uh, you can see you can find out the uh, link to this here. I have just shared the link. Please enter. And then please pin uh, three, seven, four, five, one, three, one. So you get to get, so we all get together in one game. Waiting for you all. Please use the link. Okay, can you repeat the pin, please? It's so this is three, here. seven, four, five, one, three, one. So I can share it on our chat okay. as well. Connecting and here you go. Yes, thank you. Please pick your nickname. Your okay, name. Okay, I'm nickname. in there. Good job. Yeah, we see so many people already are there. Danny out, Aidana, Madud, Emma. Sanya, I should do, uh -huh. Let's a bit wait for others to join. Have you guys played Kahoot before? Or is it your first time playing Kahoot uh, via mm. Kahoot? I have played before and when I was teaching to the kids, they had a, yeah. Uh -huh. This is fun, right? This is oh, yeah. easy, handy, and really interesting. And you can learn a lot through Kahoot games. Our Facebook page participants are also welcome to join the Kahoot. They are able to see the code the game uh, pin code, and they are able to see this site. Please uh, go to this uh, www.kahoot.it and uh, insert the pin 3745131. And then please uh, indicate your nickname and you will join us. Thanks for saying that, Fidus. Are we starting on, Firuz? Uh, I think it would be better if we start on. Yeah, we can go ahead and kick it off. Marhabo, ready? Yes, I'm ready. What does the FLEX uh, abbreviation stand for? Please, for this, press really quick so you get the highest score. Please be fast and make sure to answer correctly as well. You have time limitation. You can see I got on it. the right. Yeah, here we go. 17 people got it right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Future lands exchange. That sounds interesting, actually. Yeah, some and of further, further leaders exchange. That's awesome. <laughs> this is really creative. We could create these programs as well. 
Good job. So Arujan is in first place, 785 points. Well done. When was the flex program established? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Sixteen people got it right. Arujan, you're still rocking, you're still leading. Awesome. Okay, so we have Alt, yeah. Emma and Ainara Uralsk. Phone Uralsk, I'm sure. You will have a PDO, pre-departure orientation. Okay. Session before you will travel to the US. Is it true or false? Nineteen people answered it correctly. We have out rocking this game. Emma and Ainara. Next question. What criteria student must meet in order to be eligible for flex program in fall 2021? All of the above. Right? 10 people yeah. answered it correctly. Ainara, Emma, and Aknur. Good job. The competition was consisting out of three rounds before COVID-19. Is it true or false? Okay, so we have 14 true answers and 12 incorrect answers. Almost 50 to 50. Ainara, Emma, and Aknur. Good job on this. What do you have on round number one? Please guys, make sure to mute your mics so we don't distract each other. Short English language test. 19 people got it right. And three people said that it was interview. Ainara, Emma, okay, so we have Emma, Rita, and Ainara. You will have 20 minutes for round number one. Is it true or false? Okay, false, we have 18 people who answered false and eight people who got it wrong. Emma, Rita, and Ainara. Almost the last question. What do you have on round number two? Essays in English language, correct. 
and eight people answered one essay in English language. So actually there are two essays, right? Just remember it. And the last question, we still have Emma. Good job, Emma. The results of the competition are expected. Please answer if you know. Sixteen people answering on April and between May, right? April and May. Four people are saying on September. On September, most of the high schoolers are already in the United States studying. So that means that this is a bit late. Okay, Ainara Ural from, from Uralsk. A good job. Second place, Rita. And first place, I can't see the name. Who is that? Emma, good job. Congratulations, three of you. That means that you are listening, <laughs> you are listening really attentively. Thank you. Hope so you had fun with this game and thank you so much, Firuz. Thank you so much, Marhabo Jan. And uh, this was Marhabo, the Flex Alumni 2018. She will be giving this speech uh, also during our Flex Friday sessions. And uh, now it's time for Q&A sessions. If you have any questions, any comments, please insert them in the Facebook Live or you can leave them in the chat box so we could answer to these questions. Or if you have any questions, you can please, uh, yes, me eight has the question. Hey, sorry, I forgot to change my name. Uh, I do have a question very quickly. Um, I have joined this, unfortunately, training, not like a training session very late. Will it be possible if it was recorded to share it later on Instagram? And uh, so the person who weren't able to participate or not weren't able to join on time, they could check the, about the flex, about the eligibility and the, all of the great experience of the guys who had experience with the flex to watch it thank you yes uh thank you so much for this question so this uh zoom live session is recording it's going recorded and uh this will be shared to each of the coordinator of these spaces and uh, they will i assume they will be posting it also on their social media pages i'm, However, I'm from dushanbe uh, actually i'm not in dushanbe but yes i'm from dushanbe because I am older, but my younger brother right now is in eighth grade. So I would like to have to say show him and make him motivated to go to know about the program and get ready for this program. In this case, uh, go to American Space and Makerspace Dushanbe Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We are online and it will be saved there. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. So we have a question. What level do we need to have for the FLAX program? All right, anyone would like to answer to this question from the speakers? Um, I could, uh, if it is regarding your English speaking levels, then don't worry, you just have to be able to speak and comprehend what people in English are saying. But if you're referring to school degree or some, some sort, then do not worry about that as well, because if you're in ninth grade, if you're in 10th grade, or if you're in eighth grade, then you were free to apply as well. I hope you I answered your question. Thank you, Arisan, for answering the question. All right, if you uh, don't have any questions, no. Uh, hello. Yeah, please, please. Uh, so I have a question from one of my students. Uh, he is. He was born in 2007. He is going to be in grade eight in September. Uh, can he participate in Flex this year? Anyone would like to pick up the question? So, do you mean that he is in? He's going to be in eighth grade next year, or? Yeah, this September. 
Oh, this September. Okay. So look, um, if he's in eighth grade and he in, and if his uh, birthday is after 2004, then he is more than welcome to apply. Okay, thank you. I have one more question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, can you recommend any web uh, resources that have, for example, sample questions, sample essay questions, and strategies, things like that? So I think. Uh, who was the last speaker? Sorry, what was her name? Marhabo. The one no. that uh, Kahoot? The one, <laughs> okay, she mentioned that uh, tips such as uh, focusing, focusing on culture, yeah? So, are there any research? Are there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, one of the tips was that you can focus on the culture, yeah? You want to learn about the American culture. So I think that was a yeah. great tip. Yeah. And um, what was the, another one? Uh, you should, um, uh, yeah, if, if people discriminate against you, yeah, there will be a question about discrimination, yeah, during the interview. So is, well, there, like, is there like a database of questions like that online? Well, I would say, um, like, I did not mention about anything about discrimination, but I would um, suggest you to look up the questions that were previously uh, was in a flex, like program. Um, but yeah, there are some psychological questions that they need to check your, you know, ability. So how you would react to those situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so just be comfortable. There, can, and you recommend, can you recommend web resources? websites or I don't know, forums? Let me well, interfere in this one. Excuse okay. me, Nazel, Nazli. Uh, so look, it's not about the questions, it's more about the, um, the mindset of a person. So if the kid is open-minded and if the kid can actually communicate with another cultures, then he doesn't have to worry about any questions in the interview. Because if he is already uh, good enough to communicate with other cultures and comprehend people's emotions, then he's going to be more than ready to go. Those questions are basically uh, made to understand whether a kid would be able to or not able to communicate with US culture. Yeah, it's more about presenting yourself. It's more about presenting your best uh, your best values, your best things. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just hoping I could just use them to teach, to prepare students, you know. But I guess I can make, make some up, yeah, make up some questions myself. And, uh, let me finish Thank you. live session on our Facebook pages. Uh, and I am now referring to our Facebook page uh, viewers if you will have any questions please insert them in this live video below and then we will get back to them uh, for the next session and now we will go ahead and continue with our uh, participants here in zoom but we will say uh, bye to our facebook live uh, viewers and uh, please 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 join us for the next friday each Friday, we will have the Flex uh, presentation by the Flex alumni. They will share their amazing, amazing stories on their traveling to US and also share some tips and facts about the Flex in general. For now, we would like to say bye to our Facebook page viewers. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session.